Welcome to Thinking Green. I'm Rana, and this show isn't exactly live. We are taping it a little bit ahead of our evening time slot uh, because the days are so short right now. <laughs> they are. So um, again, uh, now that elections are over, um, during the fall we are going to be spotlighting uh, various nonprofit organizations in New London that are really making a difference in, in the city. So today's guest is Susan uh, Tamulevich? Tamulevich. Tamulevich, okay. I, I realized as I was driving here, it's like it's been so long since I saw you, I don't remember which accent. <laughs> the, That's good. That's it's a, who is the um, executive director of the New London Maritime Society, which is well known in New London for being the occupants and stewards of the Custom House, uh, but do a lot more than that. So welcome, Susan. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Nice to see you. I know you got here first because I saw the tree hugger bumper oh, sticker yeah. on your car. I love what you're doing with the um, trees. I love that. Well, that was actually a gift, get, a gift from Maggie Redfern, who uh, borrowed one of our cars <laughs> while we were in California gallivanting over yeah. the summer. And she left the bumper sticker on the seat. And <laughs> seemed, you know, she's more of a, a better tree hugger than I am, but I love having the bumper sticker. Uh, and so, uh, yes, I, I tried to get here a couple minutes early anyway, <laughs> but I guess you can first start out um, just talking about like the Maritime Society and, and what you do, and then we'll talk about how this last year or so has been. Well, we're kind of back now. So talking about what we do, we do uh, a lot of different things at this point. The museum is open Wednesday through Sunday from 1 to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 10 in the morning, which is pretty great. One day to be open early and we have a you know, COVID, we were closed for 63 weeks, so it was a long, long time. So we lost some docents, but we've gained some new ones and some very new ones. And that's really kind of energized us. We have a new board president, Christina Corcoran, who is also the teacher for our third grade program, which is sort of our, our, our well, it's the one program nobody hates. <laughs> <laughs> there are programs we do that people don't like, and there are programs that they, you know, love. But the one that everybody loves is the third grade program because um, we take the third graders, or we used to take them on field trips every month or so across the school year, bring them to uh, Hempstead Houses, Custom House, e everywhere, all, all the different historic sites and, and try to make it so that they experience the sites and they got to meet the site educators so they had a full experience. But when COVID hit, what were we going to do? We're, um, uh, needless to say, broke, right? So we needed the grant money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a horrible way to think, but it was really a horrible well, year. Well, all of the organizations yeah. and small businesses in the downtown New London, you can see the extent mm -hmm. to which they were all impacted. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. And we fortunately um, have gotten through that worst part. But we had, um, but Jody Bartel, who started that program years and years ago with something called Lighthouse Kids, bring the kids to the lighthouse. They raised money and they had a chorus. It was, all, it was cute, 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 and wonderful 
educational program in the schools. Um, it, it morphed over time to be a program for the entire third grade where they, um, like I said, visit the sites. But what could we do during COVID? Um, Jody had some health issues and her family also, so she, and, and, and we didn't have a plan. So Christina stepped in and her, her son is a videographer up in Boston. So they worked together and they made really uh, fast cut, kid friendly videos about all the sites like the old mill. We never could visit the mill because like when is, it was hard to, it was impossible to coordinate with all the, we, we would bring 12 classes each, right. each session. And uh, so she did a great video with Jim Diaz. And the eagle, she did one on, that seems to be their favorite, the eagle. And when could we ever have taken, planned for the eagle to be there and taken all the kids on? So as it turns out, the online program has been a great success because for a number of reasons, uh, but it reinforces it in a way that a field trip is just a little out of control in a third grader's mind. It's just like so much fun. Yeah, it's a day <laughs> off. It's a day you off. You don't have to learn anything. <laughs> yeah. So, so last year was surprisingly successful, and this year is really good too. And all the kids feel they have a friend with Christina who they have the Zoom classes with. So they're coming with their families to the museum. And we never really, it never really hooked like that. You know, we'd have a few who would come. But now we have quite a few, and they, the, you know, we have an exhibit of their artwork, or, or did last year, and uh, they brought their grandparents and their siblings and pointed to their artworks. And I'll tell you, it's, it's quite heart heartwarming. It, it really is something that was great and really experiential, and they probably always remember carrying water on their shoulders at <laughs> Hampstead <laughs> Houses. But I think they're getting, they're getting a pretty good understanding of the history and the ge geology of the port a little bit more soundly. And so it, it's actually working out. And next spring, we're going to do a, a bus tour to all the sites, and it'll be a day instead of you know a couple of hours. And, It'll, it'll be great. It was interesting to see Christina's name on the website. I didn't know that she was involved, but you know, she was one of our Riverside Park plein air artists for several oh, years when yeah, yeah. we were um, trying to kind of uh, redefine how people perceived Riverside Park. So we invited painters to paint it. Yeah. And she came and painted it for about three or four years. She's been a real, a real um, shot in the arm for us because she's extremely capable in many fields. And she came in as a docent because she just finished getting her teaching degree for high school history. And so she thought that working with us would be good. But we had her doing a mural, all, all kinds of things. <clears throat> and she is great with kids. So it turns out, um, we needed a president, and she's the most reluctant president you could ever get. <laughs> but we twisted her arm, and we got her. And it's very nice, because she's also so involved, unlike, you know, a lot of presidents who, who have other lives. She's very much uh, in the museum, and she understands what the issues are. So for us, it's actually a good time. It's a good moment. Yeah, even though, even with the pandemic, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Well, you know, now that you're open again, we do have some slides so picture people can see uh, inside uh, what things look like. Um, let me, um, no. Well, there's the outside. There's the outside. 150 Bank Street. Yeah. And people I, don't know it's a museum. That's the troubling thing. We're trying to figure out some new signage. We well, applied for a boat and wine oh, grant to get some. Well, good uh, luck. You know my, what my <laughs> dream is? Thank you. you know, there's so much talk of the Coast Guard Museum and, yeah. and, and its location and so much yeah. controversy over it. Well, 
if you look at that picture of the custom house to the right you know there's oh, a salvation the army and the hole in the ground yeah. i would love to see the coast guard museum in that spot well frankly we wanted that spot and we wanted the uh, place next to it for our kids you know because there are no parks downtown right green right. spaces we wanted to make a nice kids park and it almost happened because they were going to sell it and we had someone who was going to buy it and do something for a few years and then let us oh. uh, but it didn't you know like uh, potential who knows, right that yeah the who knows word my, what might happen but i've yes. been how many years have we been walking past the hole in the ground and thinking that those two parcels could yes. really be used productively? It would be great for the Coast Guard Museum. It would be it would be a wonderful location, if not Fort Trumbull. But you know, yeah. Harry, my husband, who used to be yeah. a planner here, he always. Although I love the Fort Trumbull, I think that's great. I even like David Collins's idea of having the train station as like a hub, right? And with then Liberty Bank and, and the yeah. old Citizens Bank building. And yeah. um, um, but he always felt that if it wasn't downtown, we'd miss ev all the advantage of the Coast Guard Museum. Well, yeah, yeah. and I, I actually like the idea that if people come to, uh, to to New London by train or by ferry, they can walk to oh, where yeah. the museum would be, exactly. which you can walk to Fort Trumbull, but mm -hmm. it's not a walk that people would undertake lightly. You'd have to have a shuttle. And the local businesses and the other museums, in addition to the Custom House, yeah. the Shaw Mansion is down there. There are other you know, landmarks yeah. that it would be missed if yes. people take a shuttle away from the downtown. Well, I'm with you. I say next door to the Custom House is the perfect location. It's yeah. a perfect location. Although, you know what I think? That there are many alleys that if you cut them through and you had those views down to the water, yeah. that would just open up, up New London in such a nice way. And uh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So, um, the the custom house is now open, so you can yeah. see some of this uh, these things. But we have some pictures of the inside. It's a gorgeous building. It is, and the it's it is our greatest uh, artifact. It's the whole reason there is a museum because it was a very early preservation effort on part of New Londoners. It was going to be uh, like the lighthouses. They didn't have any more need for customs. Really, basically, nothing going on on the waterfront. So they said, let's get rid of the building per GSA operation. Wow. And the citizens rallied. I didn't know anything about that. They did. That was the earliest one, I think. It was even before. Um, the train well, station might was, have, was one of the early rallying. I think it was even before the train station, wow. but I could be wrong. But anyway, they did it. And for a dollar, it went to the city of New London. And then what do you do? Because there's an art gallery. There's a. Um, history yeah. museum there's all kinds of things there's a maritime history of which there is ample material which is perfect let's just for say a custom house yeah it's 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 just uh, to me always a surprise you know every so often you know a docent doesn't show up and i give the tours and i tell one one tale and we go to the next place and it's all inter it's all interwoven in such a beautiful way in New London. The fishermen and the customs and the lighthouses and the everything. It's just uh, all, to, all one big, I don't know what yeah, you say. Yeah, I don't know. It does all come together it here, does doesn't come it? Together. It does come together on the waterfront. Let's see. And it's all, it's all fascinating and the artifacts are beautiful. Now this, so. Yeah, uh, talk about, I, I saw this picture and I did personally didn't know what to make of it. I included <laughs> it. So I did want to ask you about it. Well, you know, the museum is only um, 38 years old. We just had our annual meeting, 38th. And uh, so <clears throat> I have to say, with, with no bitterness, <laughs> um, that many of the artifacts that should be in New London, like, let's just say, all the whaling stuff, and uh, on yeah. and on and on. It's at Mystic Seaport, elsewhere, right. New Bedford, you name it, and not here. And uh, there was, because there was no, no body to take it in, or who had the money, frankly, in some cases. 
And um, so what was the museum going to do, opening up with the elephant in the mm. room down the street, Mystic Seaport? So mm. um, there are many people, though, in New London who absolutely love history, maritime stuff. And you know, with the uh, submarine base, right? So many divers, and the divers uh, moonlight, and they give diving lessons. So you have amateur divers galore. You have professional divers. You have military divers. And in our membership, we have two people. One, um, Jay Kane, who is a professional diver, and he works on bridges. He brings up wrecks. He does all that stuff. And he had a collection of. Uh, uh, vintage diving gear, that suit. Yeah, that the, would be scary to go down Oh my God, that. And, and you know that, and the 60 pound helmet and the 20 pound lead shoes, all of that was the standard diving gear for the Navy up until the 1980s, the uh, Mark V suit. That one, that suit, wow. that helmet that gleams a little bit sort of over to the yeah. right. Yeah, that's it. And, um, and, you know, it's such an evocative exhibit of, you know, the great mystery of the sea and Jules Verne and all of those stories you, you had as a kid. The other collector who just received a, an award from the Historical Diving Association, he's on their board, but he collects sort of the handmade helmets made out of boilers and what, you know, you, if you look wow. at that, it's a lot of weird helmet <laughs> devices <laughs> and they're homemade they're like folk art and how these people had the nerve to use them I do not know but they're all very interesting and uh, there's nothing the kids like more than that exhibit because it just gets them thinking about Spongebob and <laughs> <laughs> that was just a family that came yeah. in uh, we have a, a relatively new the exhibit called Kids Ahoy, and it's about, you know, there, there was a very, very well-known exhibit on uh, the sailor influence on women's fashions, like uh, high fashion. Oh, yeah. Um, I kind of remember that in my lifetime, yeah. a long time ago. Well, it was, um, it was done over the, I th the, either the Victoria and Albert Museum, one of those fa fashion museums over in uh, England in the UK. And, and I thought about it. I thought, well, you know, it's had an equal effect, if not even more, on children. And so we have this great <laughs> exhibit tracing from Queen Victoria, wow. who married right, Prince Albert. He was not the king, but he was made the head of the Navy, sort of. So when they had a child, uh, Bertie, she surprised Albert when they went on the royal yacht by having the um, Taylor for the Navy make Bertie, six-year-old Bertie, a sailor suit. And he was, uh, of course, painted in oils. And it's wow. a beautiful painting. And every royal family across Europe followed. And we have pictures of uh, Winston Churchill, of course, the Russian Romanovs, all, all the families with their children, the next generation, everybody wearing uh, sailor outfits. And then it, it the whole world, it seems like, that was the uniform of childhood because a sailor is supposed to be obedient, right, and uh, dedicated and, you know, all of those good things. So, it, so we trace it and we trace it with the toys and uh, entertainment all the way up to the, well, pretty recently, 20th century, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. I think even in the 1950s, certainly. Oh, yes. Oh, no, we have it up to, uh, I don't know, I can't remember who that, uh, all, all the cartoon characters, but there are I lots mean, of them. There are lots of them, and, and it's so much fun, and people like it, the, the parents like it as much as the kids, and that particular steering wheel was uh, the, uh, donated to us, and the Blackers, um, uh, brothers uh, made a stand for it, so we have a place where people can take selfies with sailor hats, and that's oh, what nice. that family was doing. Yeah. And then um, the last—I think this might be the last indoor picture. I'm not sure of the library and oh. the librarians. Yeah, we are really lucky. We have um, the museum 
the museum has like two parts to it. It has this library, which is immaculately cataloged and always growing and, and has, as you said, a lot of online resources. They've really gone to town this past couple years putting up uh, very interesting exhibitions online with a lot of detail. And uh, I like it because I'm always collecting things and people give us so much stuff all the time. Uh, that's, you know, maybe not everyone would collect it, but I, I love ephemera and all kinds of things, costumes, all of that. And we, and we have it. And how do you exhibit it? It's very hard to have the little tiny match, you know, books and then big ship models or whatever. So you have an online exhibit and you have photographs and all the annotation. And it's uh, a very good way to give, get a very broad overview of something like Fort Trumbull, the, the school at Fort Trumbull. And <clears throat> we did, uh, can be very topical, you know, even during the, even during COVID, Brian Rogers did a whole history of the state pier, which is a great wow. thing. And, um, and it was important to have it at that time. You know, I guess he finished it last spring. So that's online. Uh, at the same time, we, we were given, again, this whaling thing where we don't have any whaling materials. <laughs> we have a little bit now. But a woman on uh, Martha's Vineyard had a whaling journal. She'd always had it. Her grandmother had given it to her. She never looked at it really too much, really, because it was just around. She brought it to her uh, li the library on Martha's Vineyard, and the librarian said, well, we don't really think it's appropriate for us, but since it was out of New London, maybe the Maritime Society, they'd heard of us. Sure. And we got it just before COVID, and just before I had my foot operated on, I, I, I dig, was digging and dislocated a bone oh in my, my foot. So it's like a timely hang around <laughs> type of uh, <laughs> recuperation. You know, it takes a long time. And so Lori Deredita, our, uh, one of our two librarians, had the idea of making it a citizen uh, participatory transcription project, of which it turns out there are quite a few um, but we had never done it, and we uh, announced it like right after I got my foot done, right at the end of December, almost the next email blast. And in a week, we had 35 transcribers, and then it, the, it got into the day, and then um, all over the country, it was picked up by newspapers, San Francisco, Hawaii, all over the place. And we ended up with 88 people who worked on uh, wow. what was about 160 pages. And it's all up online, a lot of work. And uh, Lori is to be commended, but she had a lot of help. She had a lot of people. Like I said, New London is amazing. It's a small town, small town, but it <laughs> has these people who are just dedicated to yeah, there are a lot of fanatic people living fanatic. here <laughs> and they 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 will find you and offer their services it's like a miracle and all of that is preserved and even one thing that made me very happy is the founder Lucille Showalter who started the museum with um, Greg Stone in the day newspaper she died in the early um, 20s like 20 two or something like that. She died a while ago. Um, her son, who lives out in Ohio, he always visits every year. But he uh, jumped in to help with the transcription wow. project. Lots of people who you were cut off from with COVID um, <clears throat> showed up online. It was a perfect COVID activity because you were doing something worthwhile at your leisure. Your pajamas, whatever. Right. <laughs> And then, it, but, but, but we were really fast. We got the transcriptions in. Uh, Lori edited them. She slapped them up there, got it all together. And then Craig Showalter um, took the literal page and made it more readable. So we have um, a couple versions of it, but we have uh, a, a, a large article of context to go with it. We have the colloquial sort of version, the more readable one. We have the literal transcription that our guys did. It's all, um, it was very gratifying in a dark, you know, little 
period to have so much participation, have a really good, good activity going on. It is kind of an odd thing reflecting <laughs> back on that past year and yeah. a half that there were opportunities to do worthwhile things that none mm -hmm. of us would have thought of before that. It was, it's, it's kind of funny, isn't it? It's, it's kind of funny. And the whole Zoom thing, which we are pathetic at, let me just say our museum, or, or if you ever watch them, they're the worst um, in terms of how it's run. Like we just did, we just had a Jaboom talk with um, uh, Claudia Kenyon, who is a charming woman with wonderful stories. Her, her, her family is from the um, West Indies, St. Martin's. And uh, her uncle Louis built a sailboat down there and used to bring the uh, trade between the islands and people between the islands. And then a lot of his friends moved to New London and he retired here, worked for Electric Boat. And he built a, a large model, l large model of the gull. And um, after he died, uh, Mike Dusant, who's Claudia's brother, inherited that and he fixed it up and he wanted people to see it and brought it to the museum so we've always had it in our main gallery downstairs and it's it's a wonderful thing because people come in and they say i remember that boat that's my cousin <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very nice so our museum like it's not it's not the uh we do have some fantastic items but much of what we have going back to your like original question, is given by in the community. And it makes it so much more fun, frankly. And uh, it's, it's kind of a, a community museum. So we have a couple more pictures just inside. And these might be going into more like the gift shop area. Well, there I'm is a sure. pretty good gift shop. That, that picture in the gift shop is, is uh, Christina. Oh, that is, that is Christina. Yeah. Uh, well, with we don't see it up screen yet, but oh. I think. The, um, uh, and that was just last weekend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Because, hey. you know, she started teaching the, th the third graders. And one of the third graders brought her mother in right off the bat to the museum. It's just fantastic. I love it. And it's, it brings in um, a younger population and, uh, you know, it's, it, Another thing I will say about Christina, like I have to say, she's been a breath of fresh air at the museum. She gave uh, a considerable donation, let's say that, to make it free for, because when she was teaching the class, she realized that the, the students couldn't afford to come. You know, the kids are free, but the parents, it's $7 a piece. Right. And I, I guess I never realized that was such a barrier. No, it's just the way it was. Um, and she said, no, I'm, I'm going to give a donation in honor of my dad, who was a teacher, so that all New London students and their families and friends, whoever comes with them, can come in for free. And it's made quite a difference. It's, it's very, very nice to have them, them come in. It's great. And it is that other community dimension that the kids visit as part of a class trip, and then they can bring their whole families. Well, they learn, they, they learn stuff, and they tell their family what they know, and I love that. You know, they're the, they're the expert because they've, they've learned the history. And one of the other things is because she has these great um, work, worksheets for the teachers. Uh, one of the teachers I know, at least one of them, and there are 10 different classes she's working with now, um, they keep them in a notebook so they can bring them home and show, share it with their family. So we do have a couple of gift shop pictures. Let's see if we can get them. Oh, oh. yeah, there's Anna and yeah. Jack. <laughs> That's right. They were just in last week, too. You know, when I, it, I, I'm, I am very sensitive to the population of, of uh, our city, and I've gone to those gift shows and asked for years for things for children of color. It just seems... Yeah, although that's the um, family who came in with Christina last weekend. You know, it, 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 it was, and it is hard to find, you know, dolls and... 
But now it's just like a whole new world, and it's kind of gray. And Anna was in there because she appreciates our mermaids of color. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, it's funny. You know, I was a preschool teacher for years before I retired, and mm -hmm. I, um, you know, I was always looking for washable baby dolls that were, should I? say they, they were gendered and diverse. Yeah. And there were times when it was easy to find an, you know, anatomically correct and you know, yeah. ethnically diverse uh, washable dolls. And then there were some times that they just disappeared from the catalogs. It was very strange. Yeah, it is strange, but we're on the upswing now. We have a lot more diversity, so that's great. Now, in addition to now to just kind of switch gears a little. In addition to um, the Custom House Museum, you're also stewarding lighthouses. So tell us about the lighthouses. Well, <clears throat> before I got there, um, Ben Martin, who had been the president, he, he loved New London Harbor, Harbor, New London Harbor Light. And he had put in an, it, it, it was one of the, Go back a little bit. The, the lighthouses <coughs> were being sold off in the same way the custom house was going to be sold off. And a lot of people thought that was disrespectful because it was really hard work for centuries, people working in these lighthouses and saving lives. And they, they just thought it was extremely disrespectful. They lobbied and got a, a Lighthouse Preservation Act passed. I think it was in um, 2000. And they did a, a test with a couple of lighthouses to try giving them to nonprofits. And then the first year of the formal program, one of the very first lighthouses was New London Harbor Light, about 2001 or 2002. And New London applied, um, New London Maritime Society. They do offer them to the municipalities first. And if the municipalities turn it down, it can be uh, you can apply if you're a nonprofit, and if nobody is found worthy, <laughs> they just sell it to the highest bidder. So New London Maritime Society won the lighthouse, but they never got it. And when I was um, interviewing for the job, which was 2008, it was like a big joke. Someday we were going to get this lighthouse, but they didn't know when. Um, and it, it was a lead paint remediation issue that the Coast Guard had to deal with. But, whoa, the very, almost two years later, we got the lighthouse. And it's a weird thing, you know, what, what do you do exactly? Um, but one of the things we did was um, we had the, the kids, the lighthouse kids group that Jody ran, and they were kind of the emblem of it. And the, we brought the school groups in, which I abs they loved it because New London, it's the oldest, it's the tallest on Long Island Sound. It's so cool to be up inside the lighthouse. It was a thing they were really proud of. And it's so, so famous, it's on the postage stamp. It was the stamp representing Connecticut, right? And, uh, and, and so, yes, that's what we started with, the education. And then we started with them. Um, uh, visits with people, limited, you know, accompany, yeah. accompanied by us. And that picture is of another one of the school children who uh, one of the videos Christina did was of the lighthouse and she had her family go up inside the lighthouse. Isn't that nice? Local family yeah. wanting to go. She probably knew all about it because of the, um, the, the school program. Um, <clears throat> so immediately, you know, New London, being what New London is, why don't you paint the thing? You own it, why don't you paint it? <laughs> and we, we got great, don't, and within 24 hours, this is an old story, but it was 2014, within 24 hours of our press conference down on the beach, uh, the Carpenters Union, the Painters Union, the paint, everything, the scaffolding was all donated to us and through the Kitchings Foundation, we'd already had a, a $165,000 to go forward. So we were able to do it, you know, raising money is no, not my strong suit. But um, I thought it would take years. No, we were able to get underway immediately. And uh, 
So the, the lighthouse was uh, repointed and made very sound, repainted. It's th on the north side, it's going to get moss, so I don't mind that. It's what, how old is it? 200, 221 yeah. now, and because uh, it was uh, rebuilt in 1800. It's from seven. Actually, every building in New London gets moss <laughs> on the north side. So it's appropriate. It's appropriate for an old building. And, uh, you know, but, but we love it. We love it. And, and we give tours. Um, <clears throat> right now, we, we received a grant for $60,000, uh, well, just before the pandemic, to do landscaping. So we're at work on the landscaping right now because you get there, and frankly, it is kind of funky. You have neighbors right on top of you. And yeah. so we're going to put fence in. Uh, shrubbery, beautiful little area down at the end, because when you get onto the ledge and it, the water opens up and you look at the lighthouse, it's spectacular. And then you go inside, up in the lantern, you can just see so much. So we want the whole experience to be that great right from the beginning. So the landscaping is going to really transform things. And the grant was called Good to Great, so it's going to turn what was a pretty good experience into a great, right from the start. Excellent. And now, uh, ledge light. Ledge what's, light. <coughs> what, what, what's with ledge light? Yeah, what is with ledge light? <laughs> I hope you know, because I don't. Because <laughs> if you look at the, at the foundation, this was taken, the um, Cross Sound Ferry very, very generously gave us a ferry trip. Well, I, I asked for it, but they gave us a ferry trip for our annual meeting because the lighthouses have kind of suffered with COVID. We haven't had a lot of activity there. And um, uh, this year, Ledge Light had its foundation patched and repainted. So it looks spiffy. It looks like it floats above the water, actually, instead of like it's emerging from the yeah. primordial <laughs> goopiness. Um, it looks pretty good. There, there is a group that's been there since the Coast Guard, it was manned in many people's lifetimes. Many people tell stories of going by in a, on a surfboard, <laughs> or on a, a, you know, and, and in fact, the, the last time I was out there, some people were coming out with those little skidoos or whatever they are in the water with their lunch. They were going to have lunch there. form to keep it in good shape and they've they've kept the worst damage off and they've you know gradually uh, actually they they didn't do a lot for several decades but they got reinvigorated maybe about 15 years ago when Todd Gibstein moved to town and he is part of that and um, when we did our first lighthouse weekend, which was 2011, to try, you know, if 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 you think about it, New London has a lot going for it, right? Has a lot of wonderful right. history. But come on, what other what other place has three fantastic lighthouses that you can visit? Nobody. And they're all really different, one from the other as well. And they're very sound. They're extremely different, and also. We are friends with all the other lighthouses, and we can do we do cooperative things all the time. It it, it should be a major tourism theme, but for some reason it's not embraced. So we do it ourselves at the at the heart, and and people do love lighthouses. So we started this uh, lighthouse celebration we do once a year, which we did up until COVID, where we had boat trips and uh, lectures and little symposia, and you know plays, whatever, we, you know, all kinds of things. And um, we, we started when they first reopened for tours, and we've sort of taken over the tour part of the Ledge Lighthouse business, and they continued with the restoration. And um, there was a lot of uh, worry about the foundation, not the one that you see above the water, but the one be below, um. the, beneath the water which has um, a collar around it, which is sort of rubber put on with these big rusty bolts. It makes it almost impossible to land there. Most boats don't want to land there. That's one of the problems. And it turns out that that underneath foundation is actually, although it looks like it's dropping off in sheets, it's actually pretty sound. 
and they got another grant, they got a grant to fix that next year. So we should be able to do better um, tours in the future. It, w it, will, be, it will be pretty uh, spectacular. We did one tour only this year. We went out with the um, Black Hawk out of Niantic because they were willing to try landing. And, um, yeah, we were, went people. on a tour maybe 15 years ago, I want to say. It was really interesting. Yeah. And yeah. these people, oh, uh, yeah. they're uh, pretty uh, far up there, right? Yeah, they're, up, uh, they're outside the lantern, on the walkway around the lantern. And you see that, that thing. That is the lens today. That is the lens that they replaced a year or two ago, probably two years ago. So we have the original Fresnel, you know, the big uh, concentric prisms. Oh, yeah. In the museum, which was the original 1909 lens at Harbor Light, I mean, at, at Ledge Light. And uh, they have replaced it four or five times since then with upgrades. And this is the current one. Now, the third lighthouse, which I had no idea you had anything to do with, was Race Rock. I know. It's the coolest. It is beyond, it is beyond fabulous. That lighthouse is so exciting and so difficult to get to. It's very, it's in the race, so the water every which way, and you can only land at slack tide. And um, we, know, we no sooner got this, we, uh, you have to really compete for these lighthouses because th there was an era there where everybody wanted every lighthouse, and this one in particular. And I think one of the reasons is the uh, churning waters because there was some interest in u doing the wave energy. Oh, yeah. Which is not a bad idea if anyone is interested in right. pursuing Right. The race that. seems like a yeah. perfect place. Yeah, they should contact us. We would... <laughs> we would license that in a minute if we could. Um, but it's a, it's a spectacular, again, local story. You know, Captain Scott's Lobster Dock, Captain Scott, T.A. Scott is the one who was brought here by Francis Hopkins Smith, who was an artist engineer. And they figured out how to do the impossible, which is to build that foundation. And it turns out, at, at, our, at our annual meeting, we had experts give assessments and uh, uh, preservation plans for the three lighthouses going forward. And the group, uh, Walter Sadovic, who did a preservation assessment and program, um, preservation program for us a couple years ago, which we never presented because of one thing, you know, like basically COVID, the long COVID. Um, he said that the use of uh, what do you call it, hydraulic concrete, and in, in a big way, they they built it up like a like a wedding cake. Oh, it's underwater because first they dumped tons and tons of granite, but they positioned it right so it would be locked together, and immediately it just just got oh my got, gosh. You know, the, tur the, the chur churning of the water just did not allow anything to stay where it was <laughs> supposed to stay. And so they, they did this sort of wedding cake thing and using those dive suits. See, everything interconnects what? with our food. Captain Scott's Lobster Duck, who does not love that place? <laughs> but it, it, he, they figured out how to go down with divers with pails of concrete and fill this massive platform one after another, after another, stepped like a wedding wow. cake. And they built it. And, and honestly, I've heard from the GSA that the three lighthouses we have are three in the best original condition of all the lighthouses they've dealt with. There was a period of um, corruption in the lighthouse service. <laughs> and our lighthouses were either built before that or after that. You know, the oh. big 19th century early part was, was not good. Oh, and interesting. Then, yeah, they got rid of him. And, they, and, and then they built Race Rock, which is so great, um, 1878 or something, and then uh, Ledge Light. So we have the three beacons leading into the harbor. It's a fantastic, fantastic thing. And um, it's kind of overwhelming, you know, you might imagine. 
Yeah. Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> and it looks as though, uh, you know, approaching it, landing there even today oh, is yeah. exciting. <laughs> it's, very, it's very, very hard. And that particular summer of that picture, we had, um, we wanted, one of our, we have certain obligations, preservation, of course, but we have to um, educate about the lighthouses, which we do every day at the Custom House, of course. But we're also supposed to, we are required to provide public access. And what do you do at Race Rock? It's so hard to get out there. I mean, it's really crazy to get out there. And um, we, we offered, I think, three weekends, two days each, uh, Saturday and Sunday. And um, I think maybe half of the trips made it onto the platform. The others, we were there, and we just couldn't let people go because you could get your you know, fall, yeah. your foot squashed between. You know, it's it's all very very <laughs> dicey. So we we don't take any chances. Well, I see this slide is from a um, oh, yeah. a virtual tour of Harbor yeah, Light, but I'm thinking that Race Rock Station would also be a good place to do to it visit would virtually. Be great. It would be. It would be. That's a. You know, that's an excellent idea. The kids love the lighthouses. And um, this is one of the videos that Christina made. Her son, Curtis, who's a videographer, did it. And she's telling the kids, and there they are down below in their oh, Zoom yeah. meeting, um, about the lighthouse. And uh, one of the n nice things about Harbor Light is it has the Fresnel lens. Now, Harbor Light was first built in the 1761. So the lenses have changed quite a bit. <laughs> but by the 1860s, it had a Fresnel lens in it. And that lens they've kept out of respect uh, yeah. for the, the age of that lighthouse. Um, you know, it is amazing looking. <laughs> it, it is. It's beautiful. It's, tr it's truly beautiful. And um, it, the original Fresnel lens from 80 years ago is still in that lighthouse and it's it's really wonderful to walk up inside it and see that so i'm going to just go through the slides that just have something you know kind of a summarize some of the programs you have here's claudia from just a week or so ago doing her doing her talk and there's the 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 model of the gull i was telling you about oh, in yeah. the back if you go to our website we have a a, a group of just and very few Zoom talks, and hers, I don't know, it's, you know how when you do Zoom and everybody's a square? Yeah. Well, we had the audience, but we had four people on Zoom, and that's the video you see. It's not just Claudia, but she tells a good story, and you hear all about the Go, go Weed, it was called, and um, it's, a, it's a nice uh, thing on our website, video. And then oh yeah, this is one of Christina's initiatives. She was a um, deadhead, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she loves making music, live music, and having it go on and people participate. And so she started this series of uh, open mics, and it's really successful. People come in from all over, and it goes from six to nine on Sundays when the museum otherwise would be unoccupied and you know just sitting there. And they have this really nice, uh, these really nice sessions. And people sing. She told a poem last time. Uh, people jam together. All kinds of things. Well, I see we have five minutes, which <laughs> means we really only have three minutes. So okay. This is our soiree. We have one coming up uh, in the beginning of December, the first Wednesday. Beautiful, beautiful singer and uh, jazz guitarist. It's just great. And then... Uh, a lot of yeah. music. We, we do. We love music. And this is, uh, we were given a, um, maybe the next picture has it, an 1816 square piano. Oh, no. Oh, no. That, that's all right. This is yeah. the Whaling Journal we were given. But, but the Connecticut Early Music Society, usually up at Connecticut College, they decided to spread out a little. And we did two programs with them, uh, virtual, wow. last year. Um, Lori. Oh, yeah. This is. Yeah. With the Whaling music, Journal. Yes. Yeah, Laurie with the Whaling Journal. Let's see. Oh, yeah, mm. I had found this about the Whaling Journal yeah. that, you know, the, this, you mentioned the story was everywhere. The story was everywhere, and the, but the, uh, the big story was that it was unsigned, 
and about five people who d were determined to discover who the writer was, and it was Frederick Olney, a man of color in New London, who wow. was the, the, and he was, he was uh, involved with the, the school up in, uh, this, uh, the school for, for black children. Oh, yeah. And, and Prudence w Crandall's. Prudence. Yeah. And accused of burning it down, but immediately released when it went to trial because it was all trumped up charges. But, but it was him, and he was related to uh, the Harris family, a fam famous family with abolitionists in it. It's, it's just like, it just, th this little, little forgotten journal opened up so many wow. interesting stories. And then, oh yeah, Coast Guard. Coast Guard helping us was, was another of our donations, these giant models. Wow. I mean, what do you do with them? Well, we, we, we manage, but... And then I just wanted to show people the website. Uh, there is a lot of stuff on it. And um, I, I, I did a screenshot of this uh -huh. because I just wanted people to see the website doesn't really just say what is happening at the museum. It's yeah. actually it's sort of an archive of a whole lot of different resources. Yeah, we try. Yep. And it's open. There we are. Yes, thank you, Rana. It's so nice to be here and to feel like things are back again. Well, yeah, <laughs> and we have a couple. We yeah. have maybe uh, three minutes. Yeah, but Bob's going to take this laptop. So uh, <laughs> maybe in, in, that, in the next two minutes or so, you can tell people how they can either join or otherwise support <coughs> the, the yeah. Custom House and the Maritime Society. There, there are no, no end of ways to do that. We are, we are very um, dedicated. We have a weekly email blast, which is great. It has a lot of information, pictures of local people visiting the museum programs. You can see that on our Facebook pages. We have Custom House Maritime Museum. We have New London Maritime Society. We have all the different lighthouses, one for lighthouses of Long Island Sound. You can find it. On the website, we have links to that. On the website, we also have the New London Harbor Cam, which I love. One of our donors oh, gave yeah. that. Oh, yeah. I looked at the Harbor Cam. That was a lot of fun. Since it was up, it, w it went up for, um, for uh, Sailfest 2019. We just made it. We got the fireworks up there perfectly. We've had 2.4 million people on that, web ca on that Harbor Cam. Can you believe that? Wow. So it's a great thing. Um, we have a, a newsletter. You can pick it up at the museum, which is printed. We have uh, I don't know, many ways, many wonderful programs. Not all maritime, our music is not all sea shanties. We have all <laughs> great diversity, and it's a lot of fun, and it's for all different ages. And we have a, a holiday celebration coming together really soon. I think it might be uh, December 16th. It's a, a Thursday afternoon before our board meeting. So um, please look at our website and, and see all we have going on because we want you there. And a great shop, a super great shop. Yeah, and, yes. and, and you can stop by now five days a week, Wednesday yes. through Sunday. Yes. Well, thank you, Susan. This thank was you, Ron. fun. It was I'm fun. I'm so glad to be back, you know, yeah. doing the show again because we also were off for something like 65 weeks oh, or wow. something. Oh, wow, you didn't even do this program? We, you all, we yeah, did, I understand. About every so often we yeah. did a Zoom interview, but no. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh -huh.